Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Card Talk Plays, a show where we uh, give a little bit of commentary on a playthrough from somebody in the community. I'm your host, Dave Walsh. And I'm Grant Thompson, just along for the ride. And I'm Ted Bannock, and I love talking about cards that are being played. <laughs> I think. Uh, it's so uh, yeah. Well, let me let me hit play on this, and then we'll just we'll just get started. It looks like this is um, based on the title here. This is Desert Crossing, the Desert Crossing scenario, right? So that's yeah, good. That's okay, and you guys just played this like a couple of couple of couple of days ago, I guess, right? You and Ten. About a week, week and a half ago, something like that. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This is this is Grant and I uh, playing through uh, uh, Desert Crossing, and it's still it, it's somewhat recent, but I've already forgotten everything. So <laughs> it'll be a surprise to me, whatever we do. <laughs> right. Um, well, let's set up the quest a little bit here. So, what is the Desert Crossing? The Desert Cro I guess it's from the from the um, Harad cycle, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't done some Harad stuff in a while, um, and so Grant and I were looking at that, and he, I think he suggested Desert Crossing, and that sounded good to me. Um, so I think Desert Crossing's out of the, yeah, the, the Sands of Harad Deluxe. I don't know which scenario it is, but it's, it's one of the ones in there. Um, and this scenario has a, uh, its own unique mechanic of uh, temperature, where the heat steadily rises, and if it gets to a certain amount, I think you just lose. I think <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> right. I see. Right. Yeah. Okay, done. <laughs> so, right, so I've just raised me threat by one, added two resources, and then played timely aid after using Deeran's runes. Ooh. Yeah, just to, I'll run, uh, run a little bit through what we're playing. Uh, so Grant is running a uh, Grey Wanderer contract, uh, Hairloo in the Fair Outlands deck. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm on the right hand side, I'm playing a Dale deck. And I don't have it on the table, um, but I'm using Wigloff, uh, the ally, as a hero through the Messenger of the King contract. Which is why up in the top corner underneath Hurlwin at the minute is a little note saying Wigloff, Messenger of the King. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, the Octagon is it's a fantastic uh, way to play, but it, it's still a little... We had some trouble with Messenger of the King, uh, but we... I don't know. We yeah, it's work. <laughs> yeah, it's you just figure it out however you can. So yeah, um, and it looks like oh, it looks like I Grant's managed... got some aggro going on here. <laughs> yeah, I managed to get two outlands in on turn one, and then decided to use my last resource on a resourceful. Right, and that's I think I I think that I was I built a deck similar to this, or maybe you um, gave me is, the bones, uh, and then um, I. Yeah, this is the one you all add. Um, I was testing it out. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a great Outlands deck. It just keeps the enemies coming and coming. Now, Dale is interesting because I, I don't really, I really haven't played Dale. Um, it came out in the Arid Mithrin cycle, the Dale, mm -hmm. the Dale allies, Dale archetype. And I just really didn't have a good, I don't know. I just didn't, never got into it. Not that I don't think that it's powerful. It's just I was building other things when this came out. So oh, I yeah, I thought the Dale archetype was it, it's a fantastic, uh, fun archetype. It, it's quite powerful. Um, it really only lacks from their hero lineup. It kind of lacks one thing. A lot of times when you're running a Dale deck, uh, you might not always have a have a dedicated defender, uh, but they have uh, a couple. Their allies become really great at defending right. um and you know the only way to make an all dale deck if you want three dale heroes to get the willpower boost is to run uh landwin mm -hmm. but i'm like you know i looked at wigloff and i was like you know what his ability uh is to um exhaust an item to ready him once per phase right and i was like damn that's pretty that's pretty good for having uh his threat is like eight or something right when he starts looks like you guys got that giant scorpion um neither of you can need to engage that giant scorpion right now but that giant scorpion is a pretty mid-level sort of um character that's pretty pretty rough and sandstorm is um well sandstorm 
reminds me of um remember the weather back in uh back in the um which cycle uh the dream not the dream chair the angmar awakens cycle is that the mm. one that had all the weather yeah it is yeah. The cold yeah so now we're in the hot so um yeah and so uh back to wigloff real quick um when you have wigloff there um, I think the ruling is that you could bring out an attachment from him because it says when he enters play, you can put an attachment on him. I think you're I, – unless you didn't have one in your hand. No, I did, but I think it's uh, – let's see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a look him up here. I, I read him that he, he couldn't based on his wording. Okay. He says after you play Wigloff – after you and, play him from your hand, uh, yeah, it's just that, well, it says after you play him, uh, so okay. it's not when he enters play because Messenger of the King, I'd say he enters play, but I'm not really playing him. He's kind of starting in play. I'd yeah. have to, I, I played him where he didn't get the free item as a hero. Okay, I kind of you know Grim, if he did that would make him uh, Grim, even more amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Grim rule him right. Yeah, and so, so just to make sure that he's doing his thing here. So, um, uh, the Redwater Sentry, which is nice, yeah. right? With the Squire's helm, to give him an extra two hit points. Right. Yeah, uh, that was a great thing to get out really early. Um, and the helm gets played on him for free, and then he gets the boost with his ability. Right. So, like, already... So, he's defending he's... for four right now, right? So, uh, or three with three, five, then five hit points, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a that's a pretty beefy defender for that giant scorpion well, that that giant you, you... go ahead oh sorry to interrupt david i was just no. reading messenger of the king it says set up choose a non-neutral unique ally from your deck and put it into play right that's why i thought that the after you play was there i so. i think putting into play and playing is different it it, it also ju it also depends on when you have your hand do you know what i mean yeah by that? So, like, so i i played him without it and i think that that he he runs perfectly fine uh just with his ability because yeah. like now you see i put a, a warrior sword on him and now he can exhaust that to just ready and right. he gets the willpower boost <laughs> right where does the willpower boost come from uh from um bard, bard. Yeah. yeah the other hero right i mean the first round that you guys just played was fairly nondescript you kind of uh it was uh you uh words um, he just kind of quested and you canceled a, you canceled a sandstorm, which was probably pretty good. Um, and then you traveled. And so now this is the second round here, which can really start get, get up and going. Um, yeah. And Grant already has that two, um, warriors of Warrior Lawson. Awesome. Yeah. Which is totally, um, phenomenal in terms of defense that, that makes that those, um, herdsmen there, um, <laughs> okay defenders already the uh the scenario too i should point out uh the the one b side of desert crossing this was kind of an interesting scenario to test these decks against because they're both ally heavy right dale right. relies on characters and so does outlands um desert crossing has some text that says when an ally enters play you have to um either exhaust them or deal a damage to them right so that makes it really tough yeah, you know, so that's why Grant is exhausting all his Outlands characters and right. my um, Redwater Sentry has a damage on it. Right. And then side quests. The side quests in here are pretty pretty tough. Oh, um, God. Seek Shade. I hate seek it. Seek Shade, you know, <laughs> remove X progress from these quests, 10 digits. So at the beginning, this isn't horrible, but when you're up in the 30s and 40s and you're removing just as much progress as you're making, then the main quest is also adding four temperature to each um, to each thing. Like, that's yeah. just... And... Right, well, that was me um, marking well, down the temperature for Ted because he couldn't see me little note up in the top. Oh, uh, right. <laughs> That's good. That's a good idea. That's one of the things about Octagon. It's so versatile. You can do all sorts of crazy things. Yeah, Grant always shows me something new I can do that I haven't learned every time <laughs> I play. Yeah. Maybe a shortcut or something. So. so it looks like you guys have a lot of locations right now. So this is... That pretty much stays 
the theme right the way through, I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the encounter deck on Hall of Bjorn, and there's not necessarily a ton of um, bad guys in this deck. I think it's just a matter of just making sure you get through alive. <laughs> yeah, man. Okay, and so now you can just... Well, I guess the question is, is did you successfully quest? Uh, yeah, we did. We put two progress. Uh, we didn't clear the location, though, which hurt. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So yeah. I decided to option the Scorpion, since I have a, a defender now. With, oh, there's uh, a side quest that goes by. That's yeah. So I, lo love this. <laughs> I love to see that when that happens. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> um, and so I used Wiggloff's ability. I exhausted the sword on him uh, to ready him. And then he attacked for three, didn't kill it, but it put some damage on the scorpion. Yeah, right. With the help you know? Sam Herlewin. Yeah, Herlewin's range, so that helps and, out. Oh, yep. yep. And it's that it's always that tens digit um that we're looking at that's um that uh, of the temperature that makes it um Yeah. Grant has a has a note in the temperature in the upper left hand corner, but he's also tracking it on his Grey Wanderer contract. That's yeah, what right. the 20 I, threat marker is. I and think I just stopped cracking it in the note because Ted couldn't see it, so I just I'm the one in the Grey Wanderer. Right. Yeah, on my, on my side of the screen, I, I couldn't see it, uh, the, the notes he had in the screen. And then you get the King of Dale. Ted gets King of Dale. And that is the grease that you need to get the wheel going, isn't it? Such a good card. Yeah. What so, makes that card so good in a Dale deck? I mean, I could read it, but... You know, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, it, it reduces the cost um, by Dale allies you play by the cost of attachments on the attached hero. So off the bat, it lets you reduce an ally cost by one and also makes the ally not require a sphere match. Um, so it gives you some great versatility to, to play allies out of sphere and make them uh, tremendously cheap. Um, and so if you're running like I have I got steward and king of dale which right. is just it's just an insane amount of resources <laughs> right and so now you bring out a guard is that the guardian of escaroth there that you just yeah, brought out yeah uh yeah and so yep. now that so, comes out for free because you have yep because you have two attachments on uh bard or <laughs> brand or whatever <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> what's his face yeah. <laughs> spirit uh, well, okay. <laughs> right and so you know now now it's, so you can bring out a knight of dale for for two i mean uh, basically now you can play anything in your hand yeah i mean like yeah a hero with steward and um and king of dale it effectively nets you it by itself nets you four resources a turn yeah <laughs> right <laughs> not you know so it, it's it's bonkers it's so good right and so the long lake or not the long is that the long lake it's not the long lake trader what is that yeah it's long lake long lake fisherman right that was i when i put that in that's a fun card to play in this in this deck grant i was um i was excited <laughs> to see that because you get to pull out more allies for it so yeah I i'd usually... like to know where he's going fishing in the middle of the desert is my question yeah <laughs> well he's been off the beach i told you yeah <laughs> and so i mean even even though that um fisherman doesn't have um isn't an outlands character he can now just chump and get and yeah. be done like that's that's the way to do it like it's he's just there to help aggro the the outlands out there and so well yeah the fisherman uh i think he's just a good ally outside of a dale deck because mm -hmm. you know for two resources he's got one willpower two hit points and he effectively just draws you a card right you know he replaces he himself to... yep. yeah yeah so he helps you dig through your deck faster and you get a you get a, a body on the table so there's grant suggesting you're questing for five <laughs> Or maybe Grant's questing for five, and I'm questing for five. Oh, uh, and I see Ted's questing for eight. Okay, but there's not there's less than thirteen in this, more than thirteen in the staging area. Oh boy, it's gonna be rough. Oh, we got another 
Now we're flipping the uh, Par- parched, parched wadi. Yeah, which <laughs> I wonder what a wadi is. <laughs> uh, it looks like some type of crevasse or hole. I I don't know. I know. I'm gonna but, I'm yeah. gonna look it up. Well, you guys talk about this. I'm gonna look it <laughs> okay. up. Uh, yeah, we flipped over location and we got a sandstorm. Uh, I played Test of Will in the first one, but this one, I don't think we could cancel it. So, uh, we're just... ravine or travel channel that is dried except for the rainy se- season. So it's like a dried up desert riverbed. Hmm. I just looked it up too. Good job. Yeah. Now we now we now know. We know. <laughs> right? And as G.I. Joe said, knowing is half the battle. See, so this is where knowing the tens digit of the temperature is crazy because you guys have 20 temperature, temperature 20, which is still pretty chilly no matter what um, what country you're in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, you know, it must be nighttime in the desert, but uh, you have to you have to remove progress on the on the quest based on that tens digit. There's a lot of tens digit here. One of the things that I wanted to say about the um, the Sands of Harad cycle versus the um, was it the Ringmaker cycle? I guess it's the Ringmaker cycle with all the time mechanics. Mm-hmm. Is that the time? Every single quest card in the Ringmaker cycle has the time mechanic. And it's just every time you're playing it, you can't get away from time. And here in the Sands of Harad, you still get the flavor of the temperature and that you're doing things without every single quest being a temperature-dependent quest. And mm. I, I much appreciate the less heavy-handed approach to um, of the design of the game here in Sands of Harad. Like, the... The, the the ringmaker cycle with every single quest being time was just ugh. it made it tough for me to enjoy that cycle let me just say it that way uh yeah there's a significant number of time quests there might be one that's not <laughs> right and so this is again the tens digit the wereworm which isn't horrible right now because your temperature is 20 the wereworm is a two 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 five, but now somebody, yeah. so you should try to kill that now. I would guess, right? Somebody's going to engage that guy. Yeah, I like the uh, I, I like the wereworm as an enemy because it's uh, its values are tied to the tens digit, as you said. So it like gets stronger, you know, like the same enemy gets stronger throughout the game, right? There's me defending with an Anflus Hedge. <laughs> Which has three game. defense, right? Yeah. And there's uh, Ted going to defend the Scorpion with uh, uh, somebody. No shadow. That's always good. There's well, nothing have, better uh, than not getting a shadow effect, right? Yeah. <laughs> when you don't know. <laughs> with two attacks from the Werewolf, one defended by the Anflus, one defended by Halloween. Uh, right. And so now... Did you, are you not able to kill the the, the scorpion? No, no. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> you need more attachments on Wigloff, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, well, the allies coming out, you know, either exhausted or having damage, kind of slows things down. Right. I think after this point, though, uh, both our decks start to, get, to kick off. Get rid of Sunfarade. That's what I would get rid of. Sunfarade. Oh, okay. Getting rid of Men of the West, which pulls uh, Outlands allies back into your hand from the discard pile. Yep. So, well, I don't plan on discarding my Outlands. Well, right, nobody ever does, but... Circumstances. Right. I find it funny. This always happens to me, too, Grant. When I'm playing Outlands, I always find it that I'm that I get, like, three of the same, like... I'll never find all the Ether Swordsmen or all the Knights of the Swan or something like that. I always end up with, you know, like three of the Lost Nark. Like you have the Warrior of Lost Nark or, or, or the Unfallous Herdsman. Like I never find the three of each. And so. Well, um, generally speaking, 
I'll find two of one of them, and then I'll have a couple of the others spattered around. It's very rare I get all three in one go. It's so like, funny I, to, to yeah. think that, you know? <laughs> I think the very good tale that you had in that deck was my addition to it, where you can, because all those allies are so cheap, you can just you can just yeah. exhaust a couple and then still pull out two from the very good tale. And Ted, Ted gets out a raiment of war on a, on one of those dudes. That's <laughs> yeah. Raiment of war. Uh, you pay one resource to play it on the red water century. And then he just, his stats become bonkers and he gets right. sentinel extra hit points. And, <laughs> <laughs> and he has and three hit cards. points, right? Yeah. Yeah. So three hit points is uh, pretty good. Yeah. So, yep. Long Lake Fisherman doesn't do anything for you. And let's see. Long Lake Fisherman. Yeah. That's what I would have done. Now, the only problem with a very good tail is you shuffle your deck, but then you have to um, discard oh. the cards. That's, that's the thing that's different than Timely Aid. So. Right. So I know what I would do. I would probably pick an Ethier Swordsman and probably the um probably the steward or not the steward, the warden. Because of healing. Which is what I think. The hunter do. the hunter yeah. of Lamadon is, is nice for um when you get him in your hand and you play him and you can draw the top card, but you have enough allies out that you just yeah that I think it would be better to not use the Hunter of Lamadon. Even though they get buffed and they get all the stuff, I think it's better to have the healing on the board because you don't have any healing except for the contract right now. Which yeah, you can... Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, my, that, the Dale deck doesn't have any. So um, in Sands of Harad in general, it's just it's kind of a higher damage quest with like the weather cards mm -hmm. and some of the locations. It just kind of like... It's one of those quests where just managing damage is one of its things. Right. That's that seems to be the the overall feel of of the Harad cycle is just kind of managing the direct damage that the encounter deck is going to give you. Except for race across Harad, so it's hot and it's also archer. Like when you're pl playing Umbar, Escape from Umbar, a lot of archery in that quest. So Ted has a lot of choice. You have a lot of re you're resource rich. You get discounts on all these things that you have in your hand. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, and what are you doing? <laughs> I can't uh, imagine. I think that. I'm deciding how to spend my resources. Um, no, nope, Grant's still doing something. Yeah. I'm healing. Raising me threat, oh. healing, and I'm um, doing resources. Right. Uh, is, is it so you can... Oh, there's the ancestral armor that goes. Yeah, I was waiting see, for you to pull that ancestral armor out. Yeah, I think I decided to play it on uh, Wiggloff because now he's he's three defense and five hit points, right? Right. And now he can quest and then ready and then defend and then ready and then attack with his ability. <laughs> right. Or defend twice or <laughs> like, attack twice or, or whatever. Yeah. Whatever you yeah, need him for. Exactly. You know, like his abilities once per phase, so he makes the fantastic. Dale Hero. Mm -hmm. Right. Who else is like ready once per phase? Um, you've got um, Forlong. Like something. Oh, yeah. Forlong. Um, like Ro Rosy Cotton is not ready once per phase, but it's a one per phase limit. Yeah. Boromir. Boromir. Yeah, like all that one per phase Boromir. stuff is uh, it's like there's seven phases in the game. So you got to yeah. gotta do this. So I guess you guys are going to pick the Seek Shade. You need to get that Seek Shade out of there because that thing is horrible. Yeah. Ah, oh, there's another Scorpion. At some point, you guys are going to be able to uh, do stuff. How much threat is in the staging area? Um, A let's bunch. see here. Looks like around yeah, 10 or 12. Two, four. This, this quest, had it had less, you know, threat than I thought it would have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we managed to um, quest successfully nearly every round. Yeah, yeah, we, we didn't always clear the location a couple turns, but uh... that that location second to the second to the right there is um is the scorched Hamada. Don't worry, Ted. I won't make any jokes. Um, but 
again, there's another location, which is the tens digit of its temper of the temperature, right? So right now it's yeah. not so horrible, but the the more it goes on, the more it's going to be a you know an issue. So yeah, and when you travel there, it just it does damage, right? And then you know the longer you wait, the more damage it does, right? You know the worse the worse it gets, which is a fantastic theme to the quest, and uh, it kind of forces you to like you know you're like ah oh, do I deal with this now? Or, you know, where the effects are smaller or uh, weight, in, you know, where the effects are worse. And I think we actually choose to go to the I was, sport to not act. I was going to say, choose it now because you can you can recover now. Yeah, I think once we got the warden out, we felt a little better. Right. Um, the downside is that none of us actually have lore heroes to, like, get extra healing from warden <laughs> if we needed it. Right. <laughs> I think there's three Wardens of Healing in that deck, too. Yeah, I discarded um, the Long Lake Fisherman um, for the effect of um, the Sportsnada. Yeah, and I and whenever I'm running a Grey Wanderer contract like you are, Grant, I have no problem putting damage on the hero. Like, that's not a that's not a big deal. Oh, yeah. I think we'll yeah, still just... discuss with then. So oh, because oh yeah, you, you lose ten because you explored the side quest, and now you're not going to the scorched hamada. <laughs> scorched hamada. Make sure I emphasize that hum hum with an M there. <laughs> yeah, completing seek shade. Some of the side quests really pay off. Some of the encounter side quests, you mm -hmm. know, like like low, lowering the the temperature by 10 is that's a bit you know that's that's like two that's and huge. a half turns of yeah. threat right or, or temperature raise right that's huge no shadow effect i can't tell you how awesome it is always did not have a shadow effect it's like yes yeah so uh, and ted's defending um is that guy is that guy uh sentinel over there yep because he's got armor on so he gains a sentinel for it the Squire's Helm gives him and Sentinel? No, he's own text does. Oh, so it's... It, okay. Armor, okay. So everybody hey, we we, started using arrows. <laughs> you can defend, at least. You need some Knights of the Swan over there to get yeah. rid of some of these guys. Sweet. Well, I did have Gandalf, but I nuked the um, Scorpion in the staging area so yeah. we could clear it. Let's talk a little bit about Core Gandalf. Like, oh, he drew a second one. one. It's almost, <laughs> I have no knowledge of any of this that's coming up. But that, Core Gandalf is still so powerful. And I think, you know, in, I don't know, the more I play him, the more I don't use him for nuking people. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I, I generally I, use them for threat reduction or card draw. Yeah, I've been using them a lot for card draw lately. So. Yeah, his his versatility is still, Ugh. you know, unmatched. And he's four. He's got four, 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 four five. Like, yeah. or four, four, and, four, four. Like, I mean, it's just. And there we'll go with that. I three cards. Yeah, especially in this deck. This deck, if you know, like. You draw three cards. There's a Knight of the Swan, which you need to give everybody. I think we must have forgot to put damage on Gandalf when he came out, but I, th uh, I think we remember that later. <laughs> I, I was don't think it really mattered. Yeah. <laughs> One damage on Gandalf is not a horrible it, yeah. thing. That Lord of Morthon, too, is nice if you get it early. Then you're drawing everything. You can basically draw through your deck. But yeah, unfortunately, this late in the game, for well, it wasn't going to make yeah. a difference. We'd probably Lord reach mid game. Yeah. yeah, what's really interesting about Lord of Marthand is it? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if we have we done an episode on Lord of Marthand. No, uh, no, not yet. It's really interesting to look at it in the context of Grey Wanderer, you know, because you could have a single Gondor hero like like Boromir, right, mm -hmm. to attach it to. And then you could play a bunch of, you know, if the, the the first card you play doesn't require a resource match with with the contract, right? So you could just be playing out of sphere allies and drawing cards off of it in a Gondor deck, you know, right? 
be wild. Which Boromir would you play? Would you play tactics or leadership? Because the contract gives you resources, so you would be the the leadership version has a benefit for having uh, resources. Yeah, I feel. Uh, I feel like and I try it first with leadership Boromir and try to and see. If you're running a Gondor swarm, then you want leadership Boromir for that plus one attack. Right. Yeah, and you get visionary leadership too. Um, <laughs> to boost their willpower so i think a a gray wanderer a boromir a boromir wanderer a gondor wanderer <laughs> the gondorian war wanderer yeah you know right. boromir's like i got this <laughs> right well, he's, he's a one-man like, army he's pretty much single-handedly um saved off Gilead, as dennis will put it <laughs> yeah so i'd like to i might try to build that deck and see what it looks like on paper first okay so quest for a bunch i guess ted you're questing for 19 <laughs> um, grant's questing yeah, for eight it, it adds up it adds up pretty quick you know because yeah. all all the characters that have um attachments get plus on willpower from uh from bard right so there's unbearable heat that's the that um, does damage equivalent to the tens digit again. So, you know, I don't mind if there's a quest that's heavy handed with a with a mechanic like temperature. What drove me nuts about the ring bearer cycle is that the whole cycle was time, 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 and that was yeah. That's just really what was. Um, I think they were just trying to start finding their feet after um, it was introducing a new mechanic. So it's just time. Yeah. So, well, yeah, I mean, put it on every quest. It, but I think they learned that when they did the cream chaser cycle and then into the Harad, they introduced subtle quests like the sailing quest in the dream chaser. That was on pretty much every quest, bar a couple of them, where you were actually on land. It gave a nice feel, but it wasn't on every single one of the box. Right. And then, obviously, Harad, you had the temperature, you had... Was there anything else in Harad, or was this the only new mechanic? This was the new quest mechanic. Um, Harad yeah. had uh, um, all the Harad allies that were crazy good. Um, yeah. There's, uh, uh, the only other kind of new mechanic was is only unique to the scenario was... Um, I think it's Beneath the Sands has some like tr where you're tracking out has like some tracking mechanic where you have to right, draw okay. cards right and, yeah you know and I that's think that there's isn't that the, isn't there like a lost isn't it lost and found or something like that that goes um, through there yeah there's a and there's a i think there's, it's the the long the long dark out of casa doom it has a similar mechanic right. where you're looking for cards that have uh pass or fail mm -hmm. on them right see if you pass or fail a a, a lost check right and then there's, I guess the other one, not the other one. What am I trying to say? There's the, um, <laughs> Ted's going to defend that for you. Yep. Grant. <laughs> um, but, uh, there's, there's the take on escape from Mount Graham in this one too, where, um, <laughs> right. Isn't that one there's where you, where not you don't have any class. of your escape from Mount Graham or the one that's, um, the one that replaces that one here. Let me see if I can find it Escape out. Escape from Mount Graham is a good quest. I enjoyed it. It is. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't done it. I think I might take me Grey Wanderer and see what it does. I, it's such an sandstone. unfair thing for the quest deck to do a Grey mm -hmm. Wanderer against it, but I also badly want to do it. It's so unfair. It's, um, I think, either Beneath the Sands or the Dungeons of Kirith Gurat, which you're not... Um, which you're uh, not doing. Uh, oh, you yeah. Lose all your ally, all your heroes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're 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 trucking along the uh, the quest here pretty good. Um, yeah, Grant, you yeah. got you got you got four long out, um, which this, he just he just readied at this point. <laughs> He's pretty strong. At this point, I think we we're just like, yeah, this is over. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, we're still on the first stage. You know, we've actually spent, um, I don't even know what turn we're on. You uh, know. Turn six. Yeah. I was going to say like five or six. And we've just been 
kind of just building until we are strong enough to get past this first stage in like one go. So I think against a more aggressive quest, we maybe might have struggled, but this one seemed pretty pretty perfect where it it challenged us early enough, um, you know, where we couldn't get past the first stage quickly, but it didn't it didn't hinder us either from from building our board state. And as we had an army talk and so on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I like to keep track of um with the outlands, you know, and all their, their stat boosting. Um yeah, we're we're getting uh we're getting through there. The outlands you end getting... up you end up not even being able to see the cards when you're doing all the stats. Like you you're know? you're doing every everything boosts everything. And you know what? I think that a lot of people really gave Outland such a hard time when it first came out, right? It was like, ah, uh, you know, Outlands, it's, it makes everything tough or, you know, like it makes, it makes, uh, sorry, it makes, it makes it super easy to build the Outlands deck because it all just came in the steward's fear. But I think now, like, I, I think Outlands is just kind of a normal deck. Do you know what I'm saying by that? Outlands is a decent, um, is a decent archetype. I mean, it's lacking in a few areas where I think they could go back and say, you know what, we'll release, say, another hero for the Outlands, or we'll release um, another way of helping Outlands get along. But as an archetype on its own, it does very well. Yeah, yeah. it was one of the early ones. You know, the first one that was really developed was Dwarves, and mm -hmm. then Outlands yeah. came right after that. Mm -hmm. Um and at the time it was like it was kind of needed because there were some really tough scenarios with in a small card pool you know when cycle three was like being released right um but to what I you're saying it... david it it yeah it's still kind of it still holds up you know it's still like it's a it's a good archetype it's mm. easy to build strong it's just like you know one of the selections you can make yeah and i don't think it's deck. i don't think it's op like when it first came out, it was like like a deck in a box, and I agree that that should have happened, and I'm glad that it happened, that there was a deck in a box for um for certain players, you know, a lot of players like collecting and like putting all the pieces of the puzzle, but some people don't like doing that, which I think is a little weird that you buy a deck building game and you don't want to build the decks, but I mean that's fine, um, but I still think that it's um. Like I, I, I think it was it was touted as being super powerful when it first came out, but now I think it's just kind of a normal archetype. It can't cancel yeah. stuff. It doesn't have any like specialized resource resource acceleration. Well, it doesn't it, have much readying. You know, like it's it's fine. You know, it's yeah. just normal. The thing it's is, balanced uh, archetype. Yeah, a lot and of I the think, new. Oh, go ahead, Grant. <laughs> um, like I was saying, I think me and you discussed the outlands and the archetype while we were playing this, or towards the end of the video, and it was like, well, yeah, they may be overpowered by the end of the game with like stats across fours of all the characters that cost two um, costs, but you've got to get them there, and with all of them just having one or two hit points um, to begin with, that's quite a difficult thing to do if you've got a lot of direct damage. Yeah. Hey, we'd miss the stage two. I was going to say, I was going to, I was going to insert the little play by play. So you, you ended up finally after about round 28, getting to stage two here. Yeah. Um, we're on like turn six or seven. <laughs> I know. And, um, so you have to reveal an encounter card, um, increase the temperature, and then again, you're going to increase the temperature by four at the end of a round, but then you're going to also assign damage. So now the temperature is getting to be so hot that it's hurting you. And so you get to where um, the amount of damage you assign to characters is the tens digit again. It's that tens digit of the. So as a quest analysis, I would say that you need to make sure that you um, get through this. Like at this point, you need to get through quickly. I don't know if you guys talked about um, turtling at the first stage to try to make sure you can get through <laughs> no, the rest. <laughs> but I mean, that's, and you can't really turtle at the first stage. Either. Like there's a definitely a, um, like a, I don't know. There's a balance there to strike. Yeah. And when me and 
Ted first um, started playing, we didn't talk about what we were going to do. We just played. And it just so happened that we ended up turtling on the first stage. We weren't necessarily trying to turtle. We were just playing it as what we had. Yeah, and I mean, it, it looked like you weren't trying to turtle, but um, it, it's, it, it can be rough. It's good that you uh, decide to go to the Hamada there because your temperature is going up and up and up. It's only going to get worse at this point. So <laughs> you guys have so many allies on the board. You can't even see the board. <laughs> Nothing like bringing two swarm decks. Yeah. Um, I think at this point it was like, well, I've got so many allies out on the board. I don't even need a quest properly. Right. I think when we totted it up, I've had something like 29 quest points at the end of the game, if not more. <laughs> and there's a hasty stroke on that nasty shadow effect. Defended by the red water sentry. <laughs> and I think Ted's about to defend for my wereworm. Yeah, this I is at what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you cancelled the uh the shadow effect, I guess. Yeah, so... the shadow effect was cancelled on Ted's wereworm. And so that uh Is that another sandstorm there? How many sandstorms are in this deck? Uh you had a, you had the thing all the time at the minute. <laughs> yeah, he defends that wereworm. So and Sandstorm, the there's only stage. two, and this is like the seventh one you've come across. Hmm, I wonder what that's all about. So. And then I have more than enough attack power, I think, at this point to kill my wereworm. Yeah, I think that uh, there's plenty of attack power on the board, and I think that there's plenty of defense power on the board. There's just so much stuff on the board that raiment of war that it can go on characters is like is like uh amazing it is um i don't obviously run it in this deck because outland certainly doesn't need another boost <laughs> yeah it doesn't need those sorts of boosts we were talking earlier about what it could use so yeah what is that event that's in um that's in uh, his I think hand. That's traffic. I think that's traffic from Dale. Oh, it's Dale, traffic from Dale. Right. Resources equal to the number of attachments on the board. Right. That's absolutely right. <laughs> you gain resources with the number of attachments on the board. Do you really need uh, to run that in a stack? It's Well, the thing is, if you have Steward and if you have King of Dale, probably not. But I figured, you know... What it just depends on when you see it. Right? It's, like, it's like another way to get resources. Um, maybe if you haven't drawn into those cards yet, so right. I might I might take them out. Mm -hmm. But why not have get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine resources? Right? Like why? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but er early on, it, it can net you like two or three resources, which is enough to then, which is then you know, play point. play yeah. an ally or right. uh, you know, get 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 an attachment or two out. Um, looks like it looks like um, looks like uh, squishy it, squishy characters here. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I'm just looking at the amount of damage on everybody. It's hard with all the things, but it looks like there's there's only damage on Forlong, Wiglaf, and the rest of um, the Warrior Reskaroth, the Knight of Deal, the Red Water Sentry, and two points on his um, Warrior of Deal. But I was slowly starting to clear off damage with the two Wardens. It's just so... The board is so packed up here that's uh it's pretty ridiculous Oops. yeah it was quite a bit of um ally um ally heavy <laughs> for the amount of space it took <laughs> all 
Okay, so, well, are you going to get through this quest phase here or not? That's the question. Or not this quest well, phase, this quest stage. Well, with the amount of willpower on the board, I'd say it's highly likely. <laughs> right, and this, and this stage has 14 quest points, though, so it's a lot. Well, if I quested with pretty much everything, I've got about 17 willpower on mm -hmm. the board. Right. And then there's, it's not an ally heavy, um, or an enemy heavy encounter deck. So that makes it a little easier to, to try to get through this. And yeah. Right now in your staging area, there is, let's make sure that we got this. There's two, two, uh, seven, that's four. I think. Yeah. And then seven, three, seven. Yeah. So you should be able to, you should be able to get through this. Not. I'll send thirteen to the quest. At this point, that ancient Mathem there. Oh, it's another side quest. This one at least doesn't have surge, so that's good. Yeah. And then, scorching sun. Just surge and increase your temperature by four. So now you get a scorpion. Yeah. These mid-level enemies are um, can be <laughs> annoying at the beginning, but by now you should be able to deal with them. Yeah. So Ted quested for 30, <laughs> 30 well, willpower. No, I think that was the total. Oh, the quested. total. Okay. <laughs> and so then you were able to place. Oh, look at that. 14, 15. You were able to do it. Okay. Increase temperature by two. So we'll do that. Oh, look for a wereworm. Yep. This is the problem in the in the in the movies that people had the most in um in uh the Hobbit movies that had a big problem with is that the wereworms were digging through the mountains and stuff. So <laughs> the giant earthworms. Yeah. yeah. The earth, the great earth eaters. Yes. Yeah. I don't understand why they did that. It's, I mean, I don't care much for the Hobbit movies. They're good for what they are, but compared to the original Lord of the Rings trilogies, I don't right. know what he was thinking. <laughs> um, I really don't. I mean, you look at the epic battle scenes of Helm's Deep, Pelnor Fields, Minas Tirith, and then you look at the Battle of Five Armies, and you go, "What on earth was he th was he thinking?" <laughs> I mean, it was so unrealistic. I mean, look at what um, Billy Connolly did with Dan Ironfoot. He was headbutting them and work. taking them down. It was like. <laughs> Yeah, he's got a strong head, but you can't just kill a goblin with a head foot. <laughs> well, cl clearly, clearly you can. <laughs> but it looks, it didn't look right, you know what I mean? It looked so fake. Yeah. And it was yeah. like, compared that to like, the other three movies, and it was like, well, I'd rather take that. I mean, at this point, it's kind of just smooth sailing, it looks like. I mean, it. It, it appears the side quest that you drew has um, no had didn't have surge on it, and it just says just that stopped, players can't be readied by card effects. So also that, pretty pretty hurtful. It can be pretty, pretty hurtful. Well, it can be hurtful, except you guys have a hundred and fifty thousand allies out on the board. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt. It was hurtful. A wig laugh and fall long. Right. So yeah, uh, the typical the core set awesome combo sneak attack and Alf to come out and uh, to get rid of yeah. the scorpion and now we can now you can do this and the temperature is 38 so it's doing stuff shadow effect see uh scorching sun that treachery card uh so the, the shadow effect isn't too bad it's either raise the temperature by two or uh return the enemy to the staging but as an encounter card i hate it because it's just raise the temperature surge right you know like I, at, at the beginning of I the game it. you're like <laughs> at the beginning of the game you're probably like ah it's okay but then at the end of the game it's like oh that's so 
Yeah, it's like you're it's, close I, at the end, and it's like oh. no, the ones that surge and, well, and still hurt taking, you are. I should have taken a damage from that wereworm. I've just noticed. Obviously, the temperature went up to forty from the shadow card, and me character was defending for three. Should have taken the damage. Well, yeah, nobody, <laughs> nobody's nerfed. Yeah. Now nobody can do anything. Sneak attack. Gandalf comes back into the play. Now you're gonna you're gonna play it. You're gonna hard cast it this time around. Ted, control N. <laughs> so the thing is, is are you on the third quest stage here now? Yeah, yeah. we're on the third and, and final for Which this, has uh, sixteen scenario. quest points. So the thing is, is do you wanna quest through it or do you wanna you know hit the hit the side quest first? I think at this point you just try to you know what would you do, David? I think I would just quest through it. I don't think that that side quest is hurting your chances right this moment of doing it. You know. Yeah. Well, we we have to kill the wereworm. You have to ha have the temperature and there be no wereworms in play. Right. Um, so I don't think that that's an issue. And it looks and like temperature you're forty-four. So you have four yeah. rounds to do this. I mean, pending much. no. Nothing else increases it from the deck, you know, because we're, we're kind of toeing that threshold. Like, you know, it's going to go up to 48 at the end of the turn, you know, and then something else could increase it by two or four. Another yeah. treachery card, shadow right. card. Yeah, it could get out of hand quickly. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you don't want it to. That's what it could yeah. happen. Exactly. So. Grant's been playing long enough that he only has 21 threat. So. <laughs> That's how that's how pretty good that is. You're not going to be able to ready that character, just so you know, but it makes it a formidable defender right there. Be interested to see, but I definitely would go through the quest because Ted, you're questing for um, one boatload, and Gran is questing for two and a half boatloads, <laughs> and that's about how much you need. Well, not for really, each. not really, because I don't have me second or third Etia swordsman. So I'm not really questing for boat lords yet. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Do you have a uh, uh, Grant? Is is Fairmere leadership ally in your deck? No, it's not actually. I didn't okay. put it in. I didn't think it needed extra willpower. <laughs> <laughs> but there's yeah. all the damage taken off my side of the board. <laughs> yeah, and now. Grant ha or Ted has three damage. He can take it off. He's going to take it off the Redwater Sentry, and then the hmm. yeah. Try to prioritize it. You know, save yeah. the defenders first because they'll be the first ones to go. Yep. And now, what are you going to do? Oh, you already put the four there. So now, quest. Yeah. There, there they go. Here's, <laughs> here's what we call YOLO questing. <laughs> yeah, hopefully uh, it's it's. I think we're we quested with as much as we could, saving. What well, so the where where when we figured will die by one attack from the uh, guardian of Escaroth because he's got the bow of you, which is auto oh, right. does one point of damage. Right. So he alone can kill the wereworm with his one point of auto damage. Right. Well, I quested for sixteen there. And then so, Ted's got thirty on his side, so it's I that's I assume Ted's keeping track of the total like the yeah. last round, so thirty against seven in the staging area, and then that side quest. So, what's the benefit of the side quest once you? Um, you got ready a hero. When this stage is defeated, each player readies one hero he controls. So maybe you do it just for <laughs> achievement unlocked, but. In the no, seven... I think we just quested through at this point. Yeah, if it no, was there's earlier... Ted, there's, there's Grant, he's like, uh, I'll do more. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I think I did 20, there's 22. There's two. Two enemies. Or no, an enemy and a, the wadi. The parched wadi. That parched, parched wadi. Yep. And that was so pretty that... nasty. You know, when it's in the staging area, each creature gets plus one threat and attack. That's... Right. It's like it's one of the ones. It's 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 bad just being on the board. Whether you travel there or whether you don't travel there, it sucks. <laughs> right. <laughs> and you made it through the quest. 
18. There was only 16 he needed, so you were able to do it. Unless you get, unless it's plus X. No. No. So we have the progress at this point. We just have to uh, kill the werewolves, right? Survive and kill the werewolf. Right. Yeah. We have to defend each. I know it looks tough, but do you think we can pull it out, David? <sighs> I feel like you may have this. Because <laughs> like you said, you're going to kill the, the thing. No shadow effect on that guy. Yeah, we got pretty pretty lucky. Um, I think I have hasty strokes, and that's about all we have for some shadow control. Right. I have two or three copies. So... Just it's defending. A, yeah, I was going to say, is it up to, if this deck deals damage, ready character cannot ready until the end of round. Okay. Yeah, well, they already can't ready because they're thirsty right. and find water. <laughs> yeah, <so>. right. <laughs> Those effects don't stack in counter deck, in case I you know, didn't know. Right. <laughs> Unless it says. So. <sighs> and then there's the attack bow of you. Yeah, exactly. Boom. bow. Does one point of damage. One point of damage. Boom. The wereworm is done. And then you move along. Yeah, and I think at this point we were wrapping up, um, given the overall thoughts on what decks and how the quest was. <laughs> I I haven't played this scenario in a long time. I usually play the Mumakill as like a test deck, or a, as a test scenario, and this is this seems like a fun a fun scenario that I should get out a little more often. Yeah, I I don't know if I've played it solo, um, but it seems like it would. This one scales pretty well, like solo or I think even in multiplayer, this one would not get so out of hand. Right. Um, so I'm interested to, to play this one some more at different player counts, both higher and uh, and lower. Yeah, I mean it's uh, it's pretty good. You guys won pretty handily though. The temperature was 44, so you had a few rounds there. Even if you got that. What is the what is that uh, treachery you don't like the one that raises your temperature by well, four? Surge? Yeah, that one's so terrible. Uh, you were talking about the ringmaker cycle, and there's treachery cards in the ringmaker cycle that just says remove a time counter and surge, and it's like what right. the hell? I know. <laughs> it's like I've worked all this time, and I'm like, yeah. Grant and I talked about this in one of our other recordings. Is that like I'm the guy that tries to micromanage the and like so here I am with time counters and temperature counters, just trying to make sure that it all works out. And then, <laughs> and then what happens? Somebody removes the time counter and it's like, ah, now yeah, I'm at the end of the right. ride. I have to do whatever the time counter thing does. So, yeah. Which is me and David are pretty much polar opposites with um, how we play. I'm dead chill and relaxed. And it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll just go see what happens um, for the most part. Um, where David likes to micromanage, right? I will play that now, and then I can play that next turn, and then I can do this. <laughs> right. I like to figure it all out. It's a puzzle to me. So, Hippo Boy, here's your deck. You're looking to see what's coming up, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I was just looking for right. some other cards. Yeah. Just seeing what's in your in your decks, yeah. Because even even inside both archetypes, uh, Dale especially, you have you have a lot of choices to make between the items you run, the allies mm -hmm. you run. You know, it's like once you even pick the archetype, you have ten different ways to build the deck, right? <laughs> right, and none of them are that much worse than others. There's probably a couple of um, standard allies you want to run, but sure, everything else is just you know you probably want to have just as many. If, if not more attachments than allies, and then you can do whatever you want. A lot of people run Barivore, um with their with their Dale deck. Oh, sure. Get, Just get, get extra card draw without, yeah, mm -hmm. extra card draw. I mean, don't get us wrong. There's not many ways to build um, Outlands because it's just like, well, I need all the Outlands allies. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Outlands is slightly different. Slightly different in terms of, uh, but yeah, it's always building. fun to play and try new things. That's why I tried this um, Strider oh. Outlands deck. Well, Grey Wanderer Outlands deck. Right. Yeah, the contracts give it a new. You know, they give they have even fresh looks to the new arc to the old archetypes. Yeah. Well, it looks like the play is over. You guys did a great job. I feel. Um, 
excited I think I th- for you I guys. I think there was only maybe one or two mistakes in there. Well, yeah, it looked like a pretty clean playthrough. There's sometimes when you're playing a new scenario or one that you haven't played forever that you forget. I remember I got back from playing Journey along the Anduin, and I forgot that you don't engage people the the second stage and that you could draw an extra card. So, like, I played the whole... <laughs> like, it was like a year and a half since I'd played it, and I'd, like, screwed it up. So, But that looked like a pretty clean playthrough. I'd give you guys a, a win without the asterisk. Uh, yeah, I think we we maybe missed uh, some 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 damages somewhere. Maybe a damage or raise um, a raise a we, temperature we might have by two. Or forgot something. to raise the temperature on, on one turn, um, but I didn't see relatively. anything. Yeah, uh, you won that regardless of any yeah. of the, any of that stuff. So yeah, and considering we didn't bring optimized decks to the quest, we were running heavy allies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. So in this scenario, like a three a three hunters decks would just kind of like I feel do very well. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'd say so. <laughs> right. Well guys, let's uh let's end it here and we will um we'll look forward to bringing more commentary to the community a little bit later. Does that sound good? That sounds uh, fine with me. That sounds great. Okie doke. Absolutely. Well everybody, have a great day and I look forward to seeing you again.